Welcome to Castaway Paradise. I'm your guide, Flo. But before we start the tour, shake off the seaweed. Very good. Now let's get started. Hi guys, welcome back to Switch Up. I'm Mark Walker and today we're going to look at Castaway Paradise. Castaway Paradise was originally a mobile game, but the developer decided to actually move away from that free to play model when they headed over to Steam and in doing so earned themselves a lot of respect from the community over there. Not only did they listen to the feedback, but they did their very best to implement many ideas. Now that being said, the Nintendo Switch is a very different place as it has one of the greatest of this genre, Animal Crossing New Horizon, and it felt like the developer hadn't fully escaped its mobile roots with some of the design choices. Will you be casting away to this paradise on Switch or just stick into the horizons already on offer? Well. Let's find out. But also try to catch the biggest fish. Can you spot all There's not a huge amount in the way of story with Castaway Paradise. After experiencing some difficulties at sea in a large storm, you'll find yourself shipwrecked on an island, and as you walk up the beach panting, rubbing the sand and seaweed from your eyes, you're instantly enslaved by the local populace, who will demand all sorts of tasks from fixing their houses to collecting crabs and catching fish. There are various different inhabitants who will all have tasks for you to do. They're reasonably well written and quite tongue in cheek, but comparatively they're a little forgettable. As far as gameplay and controls go, you'll control your castaway with the left analog stick. You can hold a button down to select one of your available tools, and using these you can rake the ground to plant crops, change to a watering can and then water them, and subsequently wait for a timer. Oh dear, this is where the mobile elements begin to creep in. It's not a problem for me to wait a short while for my crops to grow, that's standard. But here, seeing the 7 hours and 50 second timers had my MGS alert up. There are other crops which can be grown much quicker, and they can be placed in your silo and then later sold. The island begins a bit of a state, and it's up to you to improve it build it up, and the way in which you do this is relatively open. Unlike some of its contemporaries, you won't need to visit a shop in order to make purchases. You can bring up a purchase screen at any time by pressing the select button, aka minus, and use the in-game currency to buy any of the items you so choose. While this is convenient, it makes a trip to the local store a little bit redundant. Your character gradually levels up as you undertake basic menial tasks, but most of the mechanics in the game felt underdone. Yes, I know it's a casual experience, but you won't find a sprint button here, and the character moves just that little bit too slow. The fishing game was more frustrating than fun, with a very small cast area for your line, and then when a fish eventually bites, the mechanic of keeping it within the green seemed totally random, and then you'd lose a fish for apparently no reason. It just wasn't that fun. Leveling up seems quite slow in Castaway Paradise, but with each level you will gain access to new items and gear. and. In all fairness, the amount of things that you can purchase right off the bat is quite vast. It's separated into several different categories, and there's lots of home improvement to be done for players that like that type of thing. It's a little unusual that you start out in a tent, and when you go inside it, it's actually the TARDIS. But as you expand your horizons, there's lots to spend your cash on in terms of upgrading buildings and restoring homes. However, I'm not sure the perpetual loops that you're put through through the menial tasks offers the player enough reward for their time investment. One of the most obvious and intentional limitations on your progression comes in the form of the question mark tiles you either acquire through doing jobs or you purchase for extortionate sums of money in the shop. Now, you need a few of these to work out what the item is that's hidden behind the image, but for some unbeknownst reason to me, the gameplay mechanic here requires you to collect every single one before you can then unlock the next area. Surely having them as question marks means once you've identified what that item is, you can go and buy it and unlock the area that way. That just seems like a more enjoyable and rewarding gameplay choice, but it's not the case. It becomes tedious to enter new areas, and when you get there, generally it's just grinding a Again, to make enough money to restore a new house where you'll be tasked with collecting some bugs. Now, none of this is going to sound particularly bad for someone who is a big fan of Animal Crossing, but Animal Crossing is very slickly produced. All of its systems tie and work well together. Here, it's just, if I gave this to my five-year-old, he'd have an absolute blast, no problems whatsoever. But for older fans, I fear there's not going to be enough to hold your attention, and there's actually more lacking than initially meets the eye. Other irritations that I've come across include when it rains, that doesn't water your crops. 
which makes no sense to me whatsoever and makes rain completely pointless. Gameplay for me scores 12 out of 20 and the controls they score 14 out of 20. Visually Cast Away Paradise has an almost voxel look about its low polygon style. It's colourful and bright, and there's a certain quirky charm about its overall design, but it has its flaws. Strangely, there doesn't seem to be a day and night cycle. The perpetual daylight actually feels quite strange after a few hours, and while I initially thought it was synced up to real time like Animal Crossing, that's not the case. And having played in the evening, the morning and the afternoon and it still being daylight, either my game's glitched out or that's just the way it is and it actually detracts from the feeling of immersion. Performance, for the most part, is okay. There's not many stutters or drops in frame rate. Where my real issue lies with the game is in its audio. It has a lovely and melodic soundtrack. What it doesn't have are any sound effects. None whatsoever. That rain hammering down on a stormy day nothing. The fishing line as it bobs in the water as the fish takes its first bite Nothing. It's really disappointing. And while you might not notice it for the first couple of hours, it's one more thing that made me not want to spend as much time in this world they've created. There's no voice acting here, but there's also no sound effect linked to things like text boxes, tiny details like this which Nintendo always put into their games. You barely notice them, but when they're not there, everything feels much flatter and there's less character. I did notice a couple of bugs as well, such as the fish swimming in perfect circles without any variation or change in pattern, and I even saw one swim straight up onto the beach, which while unusual made it a heck of a lot easier to catch. I give visuals and performance, 12 out of 20, and the audio, or lack thereof, scores 8 out of 20. Castaway Paradise had a pre-order discount of 20%, but the RRP is £17.99. Now, the game is coming physically at the end of May, I believe, and it's always nice to see a game released physically. Now, many comparisons have been made throughout this review comparing it to Animal Crossing, and no, it isn't as good as that game, but it does offer a lot of content. There's tons of different things to unlock, there's loads of different missions, and the game is quite hands-off in terms of how it allows you to customise your island experience. While there are daily rewards, your progress isn't hampered to quite the same degree as some other games that rely fully on those real-time mechanics. With that being said, I still feel like Castaway Paradise is a little too expensive for the quality on offer. About £9.99 would have been spot on, and in actual fact would have priced it exactly the same as its Steam equivalent. It has a download size of 547 megs, and on Steam at least, this small indie developer have constantly provided free DLC updates, as well as bug fixes, and just they're generally good developers. As it stands, I give value 13 out of 20. Started. Here, you can see the location of your own. As a relaxing island experience, Castaway Paradise is okay. Some of its mechanics aren't quite up to snuff, and a lack of audio and a day-night cycle detract from what is a relatively enjoyable world. For kids, though, it would be perfect. It gets a switch up score of 59%. Let me know in the comments, is this a game you've been looking at? Have you already picked it up? Or is it not at all your style of game? A big thanks to our patrons. You guys support us each and every month, which is incredible. And to all of you who watch the channel, we really appreciate it. For all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya!